Are we live? We are live. Yeah. <laughs> How are you all this? Uh, what day is it? I've been so busy. Tuesday evening. Yay. How dare me? <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, everybody? No complaints. Doing great. Good, good, no good. No complaints here. Ground is a good day, okay? Hey, well... I got up really early this morning and I got up and I do my morning meditation and things, but I was up extra early. So I just was feeling extra tired right around one, two o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't help that I made fried white potatoes, uh, sausage and bacon and eggs for breakfast. This morning. <laughs> but look, I'm on a goal not to spend. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go okay. and not to spend. So I took that for our yeah. lunch today, and we went to a trip to the office. We got out of the home office today, and we homeschooled at the office. Okay. Okay. I like that. Mm. Okay. So you know, a lot is going on with COVID, but I like homeschooling. I do, and I've, I've talked to people that have different, you know, things and their thoughts. And some people are like ready for kids to go back to school. I'm not. I'll deal with the glitches in the system. Let's work it out. I feel safer with my kid at home. I don't have the same issues that I had in the other school years. So I'm like, let's keep this going. Ten million in my house. <laughs> How about you all? Okay. How's it going? Yolanda, go ahead. You can answer first. No, you go, Shana. <laughs> well, for me, I'm a mother of seven. <laughs> and uh, I have three still at home, uh, one high schooler and two middle schoolers. They're twins. So um, I'm with you, Shemay. I I'm not rushing anything. Uh, okay. I'm a big breakfast kind of girl, so I pick I, I fix uh, big breakfasts in the morning. So we do the eggs, the sausage, the orange juice, apple juice, uh, okay. scramble. We do it all. We do it you know, all. So for me, um, life is great. Yeah, life is great. That's why my office looks the way it does. Because <laughs> it's a yeah. classroom during the day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So a lot. And to that point, a lot of people are doing shared spaces and yes. um, they studios. The other extra bedrooms are now studios, mm -hmm. classrooms, and shared office space. And so that's what Drew and I do here too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see his name right. in the background for his. I see his name too. That's right. Stay off of this side. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off of this side. That's your side right there. That's so, you know, there's some common office courtesies that we still have to go through, like the tapping and things like that that happen. Um, but one thing I can say as a mom, um, a business owner, and everything is that when we send our children to school, we know what they represent when they're with us. But when they get to school and the teachers are calling, believe me, parents are knowing why they're calling now, right? <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of times Drew thinks he's not doing anything. And it's this tapping going on. And you don't see it on his hands, but he's tapping on the wall with his feet. And I'm like, you're going to have to cut that out. Cut it out. And he looked at me like, what would I do? You did that right then. Figure. <laughs> we be in here, you know, <laughs> it's about to happen, you know. But anyway, Shanae, how you doing? Because I know you have a lot happening right now, right? I am, I'm like adjusting. So my son, even though he's 14, he isn't, like I said, you know, before he's in North Dakota. So he does call me, um, you know, when he, because they do virtual school 
two days a week and then they physically go to school two days a week wow. and then they're out on Fridays unless they need to make up, you know, a class or something. So he'll call me uh, once he gets out of school or either during his virtual time and I'll sit with him for about an hour and we won't say anything. We'll just be like, you know, on Facebook Messenger because I'm an Android girl. He's an iPhone, you know, type of dude or whatever. So we can't really face you know, what is it, FaceTime or whatever, but we can with Facebook Messenger. And so we'll sit there and I'll be in here, you know, doing what I need to do. He'll be doing his homework and everything, but we are still quote unquote in the same room like we used to do when, you know, he was here. And then I have my granddaughter who is nine. And so I'll give her my office during the day when she's here, when I keep her, um, you know, for her to do her homeschooling and everything. Um, and then my four-year-old grandson, he's in Head Start. And so they do homeschooling every day, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. So he's only on his Zoom call for 30 minutes um, and everything. So, you know, it's um, an adjustment, um, but, you know, it's like our new normal. So, you know, you got to make the best, you know, with it and everything. And it's like if you look for the bad, then you're going to find the bad. But if you look for the good, you know, in any situation, you'll find the good. You just got to, you know, make it happen. Now, kids are still, you know, being educated. We can keep a tight, tight, you know, grip on them, so to speak. And then we do know some of the things that they do in school, you know, whatever, when they're like, no, I didn't do this or, you know, whatever. So yes, it's like a whole different perspective of everything. So mm -hmm. I'm making the best out of it. I love it. Look, I don't I'm have to go to the school to get the belt. I'm just going to take the belt off. Take the belt off. <laughs> <laughs> from behind or something. But, you know, I love it. I love it. Um, I and, and like, if any yeah. viewers you know, that's out there that want to chime in and let us know, you know, what's your experience, please put it in the chat. We'll be sure, you know, to shout you out to address it and everything. Cause I know it's like mixed feelings all across the board. Yes. I would love to have, um, Karen Chambers be able to come and talk to us because she's an educator and she's also a part of Synergy just to talk okay. about some of the things that's happening right now too. But, you know, I, I got to stop for a moment because we just jumped right in. And um, so Yolanda, this is Shanae. <laughs> Hello. Nice to meet you, Yolanda. You as well, Shanae. How are you? I am wonderful, ma'am. How are you? I am fabulous. Thank are you. you yeah, you're yeah. looking fabulous. I'm loving the platinum. You know, I'm loving yeah. it. it. Looks really nice. You all, she always dolled up. She's always dolled up. But just to tell you about Yolanda, um, Yolanda Coleman Brown, it, she's with Prime America, and she's going to no. talk to us tonight. She is not with Prime America. She's oh, I'm sorry, Prime America. America. Prime America. I always, I always have done that. So thank you for the correction because. I always have done that. Prime um, America. America, not Prime yeah. America. Prime America. <laughs> hey, nobody is too good for correction, okay? Amen, amen. But um, I know, I've known her since I moved to the area, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And she was one of the first people in the community that I met at my son's school that was a part of the PTA that helped me get acclimated to the area. She knew the program. She knew the different things. She had her children in the program. She was working the programs and she was a part of the PTA. Mm -hmm. So she's doing some great things in her life right now uh, with life coaching and things like that that are coming up. And she's with Prime America. Prime America. Y'all see that Prime America. And she's a sponsor in our um, our business folder. So yeah, how very appropriate yeah. for her to be with us, how very appropriate for her to be doing something that is absolutely major that we need in our life. And I thought it was appropriate as we're, Shanae, doing this thing, don't get ready, be ready. And I think about what I did when I was younger with insurance and how we ride the insurance out and stuff like that. And so I just wanted to be able to talk about that and because of the fact how insurance is also um, your credit affects your insurance. 
Yes. So, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We know you come with a wealth of a whole lot of information. <laughs> Well, I am so honored to have been asked, and I must let you know, this is my first Facebook Live. Oh. So I am so excited to be on here with these two awesome ladies. <laughs> and um, I, I I don't even know, I, for once, I don't have words. <laughs> um, Not you. I'm just... Yes, girl, yeah. I had to write them down. It's my fake applause. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I came to Prime America um, a couple of months ago, and um, and the reason for it was because, like you said, Shamay, um, what I do is public service. So um, the name of my business is YCB Today's Task, which Prime America falls under, and I just want people to be prepared, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we're afraid to talk to people. So I'm the one, I start the conversation with my experiences. And that opens the door for everyone to begin talking. And um, I'm blessed to have the uh, gift to gab. <laughs> um, I thought it was a curse, but it's been a blessing. It has. And it's a blessing to others. I, I, you know, again, you better believe that to me um, since I moved to the area too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so, you so much. Yes, yes, yes. So one of the things why I thought it would be so appropriate to have you on here and talk about insurance again, like I said, when I was younger, first getting vehicles and things like that, you know, you don't have that money, but you're mm -hmm. going, you go and do something else. Maybe we hung out at the club, Utopia, things like <laughs> Uh, uh, all the different places that we spend our money and we don't have the car yeah, insurance yeah. money. Okay. No, no. We don't have the car insurance money. You know, I got to go to classics tonight, triples this night and all, <laughs> all the other places that we did mm -hmm. things we did that we were young. And some people, they still in that cycle. They don't have car insurance. They don't have homeowners yeah. insurance. Well, now it's it's kind of impossible not to have homeowners insurance because it's included in your uh, when you purchase a home. However, um, there was a time that it, you could separate it, right? Um, mm -hmm. yes. But one of the things that um, you know we wanted to definitely go over to is the benefits of why why they need it. What is the benefit of doing that? So you know. Um, I have a few questions, and Nay, if you have some questions as well, um, to our guests, if you have any questions, please, you can write in or um, dial in to ask the questions, and we'll be happy to answer them. And again, if we can't get to your question tonight, we'll always answer them again on the next show, and we'll even forward those questions that you may have to Yolanda, okay? Sure. So, um, first... Um, how much personal liability protection does someone need? Well, with the personal liability protection, um, the minimum is 300000 Okay. And it also depends on your assets. So for those who are asking the question, or if I'm asking the question, um, what are your assets? And they're like, oh, I just have a car then we have to go in and break down all of that. But the maximum is 500000 500, And anything over 1000 uh -huh. And uh -huh. after that, I will refer them to the refersecure.com. Um, and they would take it from there because um, we are affiliated with um, Answer Financial, which has been... Um, a great relationship with Prime America. They come with 36 different um, companies. So that really helped in broaden that um, area for everyone. Instead of you calling, you call us and we take care of that. So it's one-stop shopping. All your questions are answered and you have a local rep. So that's the great part about it. We're able to build that community relationship. So it's not like the commercial you see um, where 
or, you know, you go out here on the internet sometimes and you click to get insurance information and you have a thousand companies calling you. When they reach out, they'll talk to you mm-hmm. and you will be the person. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. To know, I don't want my phone ringing with a thousand people. <laughs> you called, you called the, the sergeant, you called this one, you called that one. I just want to talk mm-hmm. to one person. I don't want a bunch of people text messaging me saying you can press stop if you don't want. I just want that person that I can mm-hmm. go to that it can help me from beginning to end. And you're that person. Exactly, exactly. And I do have a, you know how they say you always have something in your hip pocket, <laughs> pocket, just in case, because, you know, sometimes you can't answer all the questions. Right. So I have my little friends that I go to and they're my go to's right then and there. You know, I have that direct number, but you're right. It is to um, stop you from having all of those phone calls come to you. Yeah. I mean, my house is so peaceful now <laughs> because of Prime America, because I have <laughs> everything set up and I had that one stop shop. Right. So it's been really great for me, you know, spending more time with the family and being able to go out into the community and let everyone know about it as well. So you know, not- Go ahead. Nay. Great. With that, mm-hmm. let me ask you this. With um, with that being said, during COVID and everything, so many folks have, you know, started um, um, their launch into entrepreneurship and, you know, have become 1099, you know, um, entrepreneurs and business owners and everything else. Are they equipped to um, give you quotes or information on commercial insurance as well because say for instance like we have so many people now that you know go out and buy a van or a box truck because you know you can drive for Amazon you can drive and deliver for this company and you don't have to be a part of the company you just fill out um, some information and you know you are responsible for you know getting your own vehicle your own insurance you know and things of that nature mm-hmm. and I was, do are they equipped are they able to give um commercial insurance as well and then are you able to like speak to the difference or the importance of having commercial um um, insurance versus using your own personal you know insurance or you know what implications that can happen you know if if it's not reported or used correctly Mm -hmm. on your own personal insurance um policy Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And definitely because of the pandemic, that question has come up a lot. Okay. And the way that the way that we've been handling it is that um, the minute that you put what they call a signage or letterix on your vehicle, it becomes okay. a commercial vehicle. Okay. Okay. So for instance, um, my brother, uh, he works on cars. OK, but he doesn't work for a company or a garage or anything. You know, I I broke down about two weeks ago and um, he came out and assisted me. Well, because he did that and he didn't have the signage on his vehicle, he's still under personal. OK, okay. so say your uncle or someone is working construction um, like um like I said, I was doing the um uh helping people declutter their homes. Mm-hmm. As long as I didn't put signage on my vehicle, it's still under personal. Okay. So the minute I put the name of my business on there, um, it becomes a commercial vehicle. Okay. And then that changes from personal insurance to commercial insurance. Okay. Okay. And then with that, um, I had this question. Um, I had to ask myself because I transport. Now, when you transport, my the question that was asked is, you know, how many locations do I visit? So that changes you as well from personal to uh, commercial, depending on the number. Okay, so there are a lot of things that play a part in that. Different aspects that'll bring you to that personal or commercial. But for the most part, with a lot of people who start um, 
business now, um, they're falling under personal because they're getting started. They're seeing where they're going with it. So Mm -hmm. that that big letterage is what, you know, divides that from personal to commercial. So how I initially started my commercial um, insurance Mm -hmm. policy um, was the first brokerage that I was with, because sometimes we carry clients around to see houses. Of course, with COVID, I'm not doing that. I very rarely Mm -hmm. did that anyway. Um, I prefer that we all show up at our destinations in our own separate Mm -hmm. vehicles for liability reasons. However, Mm -hmm. what about the signage, you talk about the signage. So, you know, I have my vehicle wrap, but on my other vehicle, I have a magnet. So when I want to be seen, I can be seen. And when I don't want to, I just take that magnet off. Where does that type of vehicle mm-hmm. fall? Well, you're still, you're still fall, you know, you fall under that line. You still, because it can come off, it mm-hmm. can still be considered personal. But okay. when it becomes like your, your uh, vehicle that's wrapped, where it can't yes. be taken off, it definitely has to be commercial. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what about uh, companies like people that drive, I think Sinead said it for Uber Eats, Lyft, um, things like that. Um, do they have their own insurance or do they can they still get insurance through you as well for coverage when they're doing those type of services? Sure, sure, they can. And they will still... Um, depending on the amount of work that they're doing, they will still fall under personal, you know, because a lot of them are doing it part time. Okay. And if this was going to be something full time, that signage was going to be permanent, then it would fall. It would fall under the. uh, But we would ask more questions like you said about the um, what was it um, driving the clients around? Yes. Okay. So if you were driving them around, it would be depending on the um, number of times or number of visits, then it would be considered commercial. Okay. Okay. And um, the other one was locations. You know, um, we don't think about it, but are we registered under the company Mm -hmm. or are we registered under ourselves? You know, so that would also put you in a personal and commercial. Okay. Okay. So if the vehicle is yours, you can still fall under, um, you can still fall under personal. But if the vehicle is the company's, then it would definitely be commercial. Okay. So, and, you know, during this time right now, a lot of people were cutting back. I'm even thinking about getting rid of a vehicle just to cut back because we're still in uncertain times. And Mm -hmm. um, because I do not carry passengers around like I used to before, um, that's another thing that's driving me to that. Can you give us any ways that we can save on insurance during these times? Is it true that they cut back on insurance costs because people aren't driving as much right now? Some have. For us, like I said, we have the 36 different insurance uh, affiliations. So with that, we would just call in and shop. We would give that information, you know, like your declaration page so that we have everything right there Mm -hmm. and we can run it in a matter of minutes. So, yeah, there in some areas where we can save you, but then there's also um, the what is it? The um, the soft credit check okay. that happens as well. So mm-hmm. with that, we have to look at your driving record in all of those different areas to make sure, you know, that we're making the best decision for you. So you said the our word credit check. Right, right. <laughs> Perk up just a little bit. <laughs> and, you, and you see, I moved. I moved a little closer <laughs> because little it's closer. not. <laughs> it's yes. um, it's not a hard credit check. Okay, but it is a credit check. Okay. You know, but you, do you do the whole social security number or just the four, the last four digits? The last four. 
Perfect. I was so shocked when I saw on um, something where they had insurance, they had your regular credit, and they had, you know, like three different types. Mm -hmm. When I saw insurance on there, and it even went down to how many claims you had made on a property. Mm -hmm. I was Mm -hmm. shocked. This was about 12 years ago, but I was shocked. And they they score you on credit on um insurance. Mm-hmm. Well, let well just with with credit or with anything, any company, right. they're in business to do what? Make, Make money. Mm-hmm. And so even when they provide a service such as insurance, you know what I'm saying? Yes. They still want to make sure that you're able to pay because they quote unquote they prepay everything you know to to the company that's you know providing the insurance or whatever but then you're quote unquote paying them back so they want to make sure that you're able to pay them back the money that they front you for six months and everything they want to make sure that you are credit worthy uh worthy um client because if not then they're actually going to be losing money Mm-hmm. If they insure you versus right. making money from insuring you. Right. What I, what I try to, you know, explain to my clients and to everyone, you know, yeah, it may not be, you know, in your eyes, quote unquote, unfair that when you fill it out, you know, for insurance or whatever, they're asking you, where do you live? What type of work do you do? And, you know, which, you know, things of that nature and, you know, checking your credit score. But they are a company. They they provide a service, but they're in business to make money. And um, although we never, you know, some people don't like to use credit or they think of credit as a bad word, you know, um, that's our scoring system here in the United States of America. I Mm -hmm. can't track the dollars or the cash that you say that you pay to pay, you know, that you use to pay your bills. I don't know when you actually pay something with cash because I'm not able to track it. The only way that I'm able to track you or to track your habits, to to track, you know, um, how responsible you are is through you paying your bills through, you know, credit, um, obtaining credit and paying it back and and everything else. And so, yeah, you may think that it's, you know, unfair Mm -hmm. to a degree, but they are essentially in business, you know, to make money. And credit plays a big part in so many things that we don't even take into consideration. Yes. You know, that's mm-hmm. always, you know, working behind, you know, the scenes. The scenes. It's like, oh, oh my God, they pulled my credit for that. I mean, folks are like being denied promotions. They're being pre- denied employment. They're being denied a lot of different things mm-hmm. on the basis of, you know, not having, um, you know, good credit. And if they are being awarded it, if they have bad credit, they're being awarded certain things at such a higher level than the average, you know, person, someone that is responsible with, you know, with their credit and everything. So have you um, ever witnessed someone, you know, not being able to um, attain um, insurance or, you know, anything like that due to their credit and, you know, what did they do about it or, you know, how did they react to it? Sure. And I, like I said, I do counseling on the side and that's a part of it because I find that a lot of people get frustrated and don't want to go through the process. Mm -hmm. So the key is, is that I'm not going to let you go. I'm sorry. You can get the uh, insurance by. Yeah. Okay. So why couldn't you get it? What's going on? What do we have to do to get you there? You know, because you want to be there. Right. But if I let you leave, you're going to think no one cares about you. Right. And so that's what I look at. Mm-hmm. I look at, OK, what do we have to do? And we start doing the homework. You know, I go to the dollar store and I buy these little books and I say, we're going to start right here. OK. And you got to know who you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you know you're not good at paying your bills on time, you got to make some reality checks. Right. You right. know, but yeah. when you're out here and you get in an accident. And you hit someone and you don't, and you're uninsured. Mm. That impact other driver 
is even more. Right. You know, so that's what we have to consider. It's a full circle with it. Yeah. It's a little setback. Yeah. We had a family member that got hit by someone Mm -hmm. and um, the motorist was not covered. And he was paralyzed from the um, waist down. His entire Mm -hmm. life changed. Right. And, you know, that ended up coming off, coming out of his insurance and he had medical bills and so mm-hmm. forth. Um, right. But, right. you know, and it wasn't even that person's car. So you have so you have some programs that are funds that are help. But that that was a life changing thing. We got a question mm-hmm. from Tanya Mackle. Tanya, thank you for joining us. Tanya says, does the credit check affect your rates, your coverage or both? Uh, where what we look at is we look at um accidents, you know, and how you pay those laps. So the one thing that you want to do is make sure, however you set it up to pay, you pay it on time, because eleven fifty nine p.m. It's not just for getting in your assignment for school. It's getting in your payment, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I and I always think about that because you know, once you look at your paperwork and before it laps, mm-hmm. but if that computer frees up <laughs> at eleven fifty eight, you're right. in trouble, right? So let's get it in. At 10 o'clock, at least. Right. Or 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. Let's get it in on time. So, I yeah, like it does. It, you it, might get a thunderstorm and you don't have no power. <laughs> <laughs> don't wait till the last right. minute. So, right. let's see. Um, Tanya has a couple of other questions. She says, if your rate um, is affected, what does it take to change it? That's one question. And she says, if my vehicle is in my LLC name, am I still required to have commercial insurance or is it or is it just if I drive another company's vehicle? Um, LLC can, again, from the basis that we talked about in the beginning, you can have an LLC and still be per- personal but the I'm going to say within that first year you're going to have to decide whether or not you're really in your business because it's going to end up going commercial mm-hmm. so when you start there's a little leeway there mm-hmm. but once you see that you're going into it it's you're going to have to decide Okay. You know, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you because that's where we get messed up. That's where we get taxed more. That's where we get suspended. That's when the state comes after you. I just want to say, you know, it you gotta a look at all of those things. things. Right. We want it the benefits. Huh? We want benefits of having an LLC, the write-offs, you know, for, for being a business owner, everything. But, you know, they pay a little differently for, you know, different things. So you, yes. like you, you got to come full circle. You got to take the good with the bad. You got to right take the, the bad mm-hmm. of everything. Everything is not, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to put it in a, in a company name and then you know, use it as a write-off, but then you have to make sure that all your, you know, your ducks are in a row completely. Mm-hmm. Um, when you go, you know, it doesn't come back to bite you. Mm-hmm. And so, and like, I was saying, I, question, I suggest, you know, um, to go in, you know, a little, you know, deeper, whatever, talk to, you know, a tax professional, talk right. to a business tax mm-hmm. professional. To make sure that when you set up and, you know, you let them know, I want to use my business, I want to use part of my home, I want to use this, I want to use that, the way that you should actually structure it or pay them to actually structure it correctly, you know, for Mm -hmm. us and everything Mm -hmm. so that we're not, you know, 
um, opening up and shutting down or, you know, the expenses are eating us up or eating our businesses. Yeah. Up. yeah. And that's key because that's what we do, you know, and you're right. And, and that's the reason why I say, and I want you to understand what you have to do because after you leave me, you're going to have to answer those questions to someone else, right. you know? Right. So it's still going to be the same circle. So let's build that relationship. Let's get it going. Right. I can be your good girlfriend. <laughs> if we got to get in the rink and we got to box a little for you to get it out. Let's get it out. And she was, she, I'm telling if you. If you have a. <laughs> <laughs> we don't spend well, I mean, you know, we don't win in a prayer. <laughs> but I mean, that just shows your true heart. It really shows your true heart. Yeah. The care is there. Not just for business, but for the people around her, for the parents and students that mm -hmm. were around her. I saw it for myself. So uh, when I found out that she was doing this and some other things that she's doing, I just found it um, so appropriate to have her come here because she's like family. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So tell us, you know, real quick, how can they get in touch with you to get more information? Sure. My number is 301-648-9618. And my email address and my email is ycolemanbrown at primeamerica.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will be back in touch with you again for more questions because it's just not enough time to answer everything here. And we're going to refer some of those questions cool. over and have you back again because there's still some more things that I'd even like to know. And I just want to say that when we're talking about saving money and sometimes we think we could just chip off certain little things, it really didn't cost that much more for me to get the business uh, liability uh, automobile insurance, then it, it, I think it was maybe about 10 or $20 more. But I'd rather be safe right. than sorry, right? Because That's we know right. when we see That's vehicles right. that are uh, commercial vehicles, oh, my neck and my back, my back and my neck, you know, people instantly see mm -hmm. dollar signs and you want to be insured, you want to be properly covered. So please reach out to Yolanda um, and, and Yolanda, give your information again. Sure, and this is my pleasure. 301-648-9618. My email address is ycolemanbrown at primeamerica.com. Well, thank you for joining us. We look forward to talking to you again, okay? Yes, thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> and you all stay safe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we got to do some catching up. We got some shout outs that we need to do. Um, so please excuse us. We just got so excited about that right there. Um, so let's do catch up on some of our shout outs. Really quick, we have Samuel uh, Shellington. Thank you for joining us. Um, Lisa Marie Flores, thank you for joining us. Stephen Nim Nyamba, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Thank you for joining us. Arlene Buckner, thank you for joining us. Melvin Waddy, thank you for joining us. Jamal Sally, thank you for joining us. Amy Jones, Amy Jones is a friend from way back. She from my classic days and triples and all that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, let's see, who else do we have? You want to do the next list? Okay. Um, I would definitely like to say thank you to everybody. Um, to Miss Charlotte. Hey, Miss Charlotte, thank you. Edward Carver, thank you for uh, joining us. Um, Uncle Robert uh, McLeod, thank you, Uncle Leroy, for joining us. My girlfriend, Cheryl, from um, high school, woo, 30 years ago. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, my cousin, um, Stephen, my cousin, Latonya, I want to say I love you. I'm going to call you later. I hope that you're feeling well. I just wanted to give you a little bit of time to, you know, to recuperate and everything. You are in my thoughts, my hearts, and my prayers. 
I want to say hey to Nikki Williams. Hey, Honey Bun. Also Hi. to um, my girlfriend, Vaughn Zella. She is actually um, my godson's mother. Um, so, you know, we go <laughs> way with that because um, our baby is like 31, 32 years old. Um, thank you, Honey, for joining in. Um, Shan Payton. Um, who is a fellow uh, credit repair uh, business owner, Wendell Stokes from school, uh, Goldie. Hey, Goldie. Thank you for joining us. She is actually um, a fellow Primerica um, business um, owner down in New Orleans. She's doing okay, politics. Yes, indeed. My cousin Bernard, my good girlfriend, Doreen, she waving. Hey, boo. Ivan Williams from school. Um, and Jamal McLeod, thank you for joining us. I hope we gave you some valuable information and we still have more uh, to come. And you know what? If we didn't call you out tonight, we thank you anyway for joining us. But I just got a couple of more. Timothy Jones, Sharon Ray, Dre Kush. Hey, Dre. Um, Terry Watkins, uh, Mary Bannister, was it Merv Bannister, Veronica Gordon Carroll. Um, Mr. Bagley, and let's see. Somebody said, Shemay, you took it way back. They're talking mm -hmm. about my club days. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, we used to do, what was it? You told me a Sunday night house party. And then we went to uh, the classics. I think it was on Tuesday nights. <laughs> um, uh, uh, triples on Thursday nights. And I never went to the <laughs> IBEX. Let me give a shout out to you for remembering and remembering oh, yeah. the days. So what that means is that you did it on a regular basis. Yes. So that every you could day. have memory, okay? That's right. I was at the club every day. Yeah. <laughs> I was. When I turned 18, I was out there at the club. My mother said, you don't have to wait till the lights come on to leave. We was out in the parking lot when the lights came on, but we was having fun. That's so, it. you know, thank, what, thank God for Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I Amen. still have fun. Um, thank you, Keisha, for joining us. And um, Dexter Kendrick, thank you. Let's see. Thank you all always for joining us. Um, you know, we always want to make sure that you have information that you're informed. Laura Colbert, um, let's see. Like I said, if I did not call your name, don't you chew my hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Nay, tell us what you have happening. Um, so I just want to talk just a little bit. You know, I'm going to talk about credit because that's my thing. I am who the professional credit diva. Um, and so I just want to make sure you know that everybody is always aware about different things about credit. Um, some things that you guys already know, some things that you may not know. Um, my goal is to definitely um, have everyone that I come in contact with to reach a 750 or higher credit score. Um, so I just want to, you know, educate you guys on how you can do that, you know, with me or without me. I'm just here to share. Um, and I just want to share um, just a few things um, actually from my uh, ebook that um, is actually going to be available uh, for download um, next month. Um, some of the things that you're actually doing to ruin your credit. And we may not, you know, we may think that we know what we're doing as far as like letting things go into fall or not, you know, paying our bills. But it's other things, too, that may not uh, be so obvious to you that you're doing to actually, you know, ruin your credit. So I just want to give some folks a heads up because you can stop that cycle and you can, um, you know, switch it, switch your thinking and, you know, be cognizant of what you're actually doing, you know, to, um, you know, to ruin your credit so that you can reverse that. Um, and so one of the things um, that you may not be aware of that um, you're actually doing um, to ruin your credit is uh, not really understanding how the credit bureaus work. And the first thing is, um, I want to let you, you know, you guys know, if you don't know that the credit bureaus are not government agencies. And in actuality, they're not even bureaus. 
Okay, so when you think of a credit bureau, you kind of think of a government agency because you're thinking of like the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation or whatever. What they are really are credit reporting agencies. Okay, they are privately owned companies that are in business to make money. They are not, you know, government um, sanctioned or anything, you know, like that. Um, and but it breaks they, on you like it's the government. It's like the exactly. IRS forever. Because a lot of us don't know that we actually have rights. You know what I'm right. saying? With the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Debt Act, and things of that nature, we don't really know that we have rights um, when it comes to our, you know, our credit and, you know, protecting it um, and the debts that we owe and things of that nature. So a lot of times they use the scare techniques and they, you know, come back and say uh, when you dispute something that something has been verified and they have verified it. And, you know, this doesn't appear, you know, to be legitimate when you send in a request. It's your right to dispute anything that's on your credit report. And so a lot of times, you know, it's a templated letter that they send and they may be asking you for some information that you don't really know how to, you know, obtain. Um, and then it's also the fact that the way things are worded from them, that it's kind of like, listen, we responded, go sit down, go shut up or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And you're like, well, they responded and said that it was mine. It was verified. So what if they responded and said that it was yours and it was verified? <laughs> it's your right to dispute it until um, you get the result, you know, that you feel and you believe in your heart to be, you know, 100% Correct. And so I wanted to let folks know also, too, that it's not a law that says that your creditors have to report your, um, you know, your debt, your payment history or anything to these credit like reports. the mafia. Huh? These credit reporters are like the mafia. They're coming out. Yeah, they're worse, they, 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 they worse than the mafia because, you know, they, they hold up. They hold your life, your life, mind, and everything, you know, in their hands. And they make money off of people that have less than perfect, you know, credit. Um, and so, as I was saying, they don't have to report. Um, your creditors do not have to report to the credit bureaus. But being as though they do, then they need to report, you know, accurate information. And you know that they don't have to report because some of your credit reports may contain all of your credit accounts. Some may um, contain, you know, half or a third. And that's because some creditors report to all three of the credit reporting agencies. Some report to two, some report to one. Some report to none. Like take your rent, for instance. They don't report, you know, your payment history or your credit unless you join um, a rent reporters type of um, program where you can right. then have, you know, your rental payments, your rental history added to your credit report that helps you out, you know, when you're purchasing a home or, you don't know. that in pay late. <laughs> exactly. The only time your rent is reported to you know, the credit bureaus is when it goes into default because you didn't pay it. Right. Because it does. Oh, you know, and then a collection. And they have rental credit as well. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, that's one of the things, you know, you believe everything that they tell you um, without challenging it or anything or, you know, speaking to someone um, where that's their forte, where they can actually kind of guide you and, you know, to help and assist you um, with when you get, you know, responses um, that you don't fully un understand from the credit um, bureaus, the actual, you know, the credit reporting agencies. Right. So another thing is, um, like, you know, I said, you know, believe it, you know, what they tell you. Just because they say that they verify something, it doesn't mean that they 100% verify something. They are bombarded and they are overwhelmed. They are. Um, and right now it's taking longer. It's taking approximately it, 60 where we used to get a 30 day reply. It's taking 60 with COVID. Well, so you may not get those. Exactly, because they had the limited staff, you know, and I can't really fault them for taking advantage of, you know, the situations to a degree where, you know, they can work from home or not come to work due to, you know, the right. pandemic. We all, you know, 
took advantage of it, you know what I'm saying, to a degree. Why would that, you know, industry be any different? And then, you know, the, the seriousness of it, you know, being so close to folks and everything else. So that's it like a trade room floor there. Yeah, that's understandable. Exactly. Um, and then a lot of us, you know, we do get our credit reports, you know, in the mail, like if you apply for credit and you have been denied or whatever, you know, they send you um, a copy of your credit report. They send you a copy of, you know, the decision and um, you don't really understand it. It's so much. It's so mumbo jumbo. It's a lot of rhetoric. It's a lot of information, you know, on your credit report and everything. And believe it or not, they're actually designed to be confusing. Because a lot of times as the average consumer, it's like, what is this, you know, 38 page document? I'm not going through this. They might go through the first couple sheets right, and, and, back. <laughs> and that's it. And you see it exactly. And it's like, this is just too much. It's a headache. That's what they're gambling on, actually. You know, that you get so tired and so frustrated. You're like, you know what? I'm not dealing with this. Well, guess what? I deal with it. That's my job. I do this full time I love it. If you have any questions, you know, about how your credit report or anything, then, you know, I definitely encourage you to schedule a 30 minute um, complimentary consultation with me. I'll go over, you know, everything, you know, with you because you need to know what's on your credit report. I get so many clients um, that say, you know, I haven't checked it in five years or I check Credit Karma. Credit Karma is not going to give you all the information that you need from your actual 30, 40 page Credit yeah, people calling me and say, oh, my credit is a 630. And when we actually pull it for them to purchase a home, it's 550. Yes. Call me and I can let you know. <laughs> Schedule your 30 minute consultation. I'll let you know why the difference is there, um, how the difference is calculated and, you know, why it's such a big, you know, gap. Yeah. This is what I do. This is what I study. This is what I love because I want you folks to be educated um, and to know what rights you have, what course of action you have, what you can do, um, you know, to obtain a 750 or higher uh, credit score. I love uh, my folks. I love people. And I love being able to be a positive um, force in their life. Um, so much is happening and financial um, distress is is the biggest cause in a lot of, you know, breakups, you know, medical issues and everything else. So if I can bring um, 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 a sense of relief from folks as far as, you know, with their credit and how we can, you know, get you where you need to be, get you where you want to be, get you where you have to be um, and, you know, get you to that 750 or higher um, excellent credit score, then I'm definitely here for you. Well, great, great. And um, can you just let them know? Uh, you got some other things. You got uh, let them know how they can reach you. And um, your birthday is coming. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> you guys can definitely reach me. I am on Facebook and um, Instagram. My uh, business page for Facebook and for Instagram is Professional Credit Diva. Um, and then I can, you know, you can send me a message or you can text me um, at. 443-973-7555. Um, definitely reach out to me if you're interested in scheduling a 30-minute complimentary consultation. Um, I would love to speak with you, explain your credit report, you know, to you to let you know, you know, what's definitely on there, what we can, you know, remove. Some folks might not even need my services. They just need, might need to be um, informed of what they need to do going further um, to help them bring up their credit score um, and everything. And then again, as I stated, my um, ebook is going to be available for download um, and it's entitled 20 Things You're Doing to Ruin Your Credit um, because there are, you know, it's more than 20 things that, you know, you're doing that you're not even aware of. But these are like some of the top ones that you can definitely fix um, immediately. So again, you know, the professional credit diva, uh, professional credit diva on Instagram and my uh, text is 443-973-7555. You can just text 30 minute complimentary consultation and I'll be happy, um, you know, to send you the link to schedule. Well, thank you very much. 
and your 2021, I hope Hawaii birthday yeah, is coming. 50 next year, guys. I know 50 where, right? But um, <laughs> I'll be 50 next year. And so um, Nakia um, Pompey, who um, is also um, a business um partner of ours. She is a, a travel agent as well. And so she is um, has already scheduled and booked my um, uh, Hawaii five zero birthday thing. So it's like, <laughs> just like the show. And and people that are my <laughs> age <laughs> babies. Exactly. So my Hawaii, my 50th Hawaii birthday, the theme is Hawaii five zero, and it's Janae's fabulous 50th birthday. Um, that is coming up in June of uh, 2021. If you're interested, um, the only thing you have to do is you can search on Facebook and it says um, you can search Sinead Fab at 50. And that's where all the information is. The deposit link is already up. It's only $100 to secure um, your room. Uh, we're going to have a blast. We go from June the 15th to June the 19th. Um, and for my 50th on the 16th, we're going to have like a big luau and everything. So I'm excited. I want everybody that wants, you know, to be a part of it to please come out and join us. I got to figure out what I'm going to do for my 50th birthday. I'm 21. I got a lot of years I to uh, play. So. sister. <laughs> So anyway, thank you for that information. And um, I just want to talk about, of course, I'm always talking to you all about real estate, but there's a few things that I do. As I became a real estate agent, I found that there were some other needs in this um, in this career. And so you see a sign under there, or you see um, that it says Synergy Virtual Solutions. Synergy Virtual Solutions is a company that is set to help you grow your business um, and to help keep you motivated so that you can go out there and actually meet with your clients. And so if you're interested in services, whether you need someone to do your admin work, some cold calling, um, some other things like that, you should definitely, definitely reach out to us. And so you can reach us on Facebook at uh, C. Smith Properties, LLC, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Your Realtor, Shemay Smith. And of course, you can reach my website for Synergy VA Solutions is Synergy, S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y, VA Solutions.com. And so when you partner with us and you become someone that... um help sponsor different things, you get a chance to be in nice things like this. Um, our folders uh, that I hand out to my clients, and I should have had my magazine up here, but I also have a magazine that you all have seen um, posted uh, as well. And so those things you get to be a part of, here we go. Here's the magazine. And if you sponsor, you get a page on the inside of the magazine. So. Um, membership has its privileges, as they say. And we also like you to be able to come here and um, talk about your business because um, just like we say, each one, each one, reach one, you have something that's valuable to somebody. And we want to get that information out there. You don't just have to be friends with us. You can partner with us. It's networking, right? And so um, always behind the scenes, we have Great people, and those people are part of Synergy um, VA Solutions. So thank you, Kathleen, and thank you, Micah, always. I also have to shout out some of the others. They just do a great, magnificent job, and we thank you so much for your support. And so I know that this has been a little longer than we may do sometimes, but again, we always thank you. And there's still a great time to buy real estate. I represent both buyers and sellers. And either way, I'm going to represent you tooth and nail to the sale till we sold, okay? So we look forward to speaking with you always, always, always. And until next time, please stay safe and stay care uh, and take care. All right? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.